So I'm going to show you how to rebuild a door handle. Uh, usually what happens is the door handles will not present. So this piece that comes out here with the handle on it, the gears will break off and or sometimes the switches will, will break, the wire contacts in the back will break from flexing so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to put this kit in. Uh, it's a kit that we make here. It has new micro switches with a high grade wire that doesn't that allows flex and a new paddle gear that's stainless steel unlike the pot metal ones that are in the, the door handle. So I'm going to show you how to take this apart, put all new parts in it and then put it back together again. Usually there's a, a vapor barrier cover on the back of it. Sometimes there's zip ties, sometimes there's not. Sometimes there's push pin clips on these little, little pins here. Kit comes with new push pins so you can just take those other push pins off. If it's old enough it won't have any push pins on it. Like this one, this one's kind of old. The barrier comes right off pretty easily on this one. Some of them are really stuck on. Just have to peel a little harder. Now inside here, this wiring's a little bit of a mess. We're gonna clean this all up. Here's your uh, switches that you're replacing. This kit is the wires routed a completely different way in a different manner for flexibility reasons. And you can see here how this wire is bending at a sharp angle. And then this one, it's not bending as much, but it's flexing over and over again. Usually the wires will break up here in the in the contact area where it goes into the switch. Uh, this one has actually has a broken paddle gear. In fact, the paddle gear is actually missing. So this one fell out at some point. This down here, this was the routed uh, originally from the factory like this. Problem is this connector here gets water in it and that can cause uh, the door handles to operate improperly or just cause the door handle to fail altogether. So we're gonna relocate this wiring a little bit tuck this up under here, uh, protect it a little bit better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut all these zip ties. There's plenty of, of slack on this cable. Uh, there's actually all, more than usual. You can actually bring this back a couple of inches and they'll still plug in, no problem. Cut these off, free that up. Now carefully up in here, there's one zip tie that has this wad. You gotta be very careful not to cut any additional wires. And you pull it apart. Now, if you have a light, this is the light wire for the door handle. Um, there's an LED in there. Uh, some have it, some don't. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Uh, the other thing to check too is these wires coming in and out of the module that's encapsulated where water does get in here sometimes and it'll start corroding. You'll see green corrosion coming out of these holes. If you have a lot of green corrosion, you may have a, a module issue or it may be coming that you're going to have a moduling issue. They may still work, but uh, check those as well. Those those are notoriously having issues. So in order to take this apart any further, we're gonna have to take this motor out. So it means we're gonna have to cut these zip ties. They're on the housing. Undo these wires here. And this is all gonna get retied up better than it was. Uh, this is your switch harness. They do loop the switch harness under this other switch. You gotta be careful. This is not replaceable because this wire goes straight into the module with no connectors on it. So what we're gonna have to do is get the wiring underneath that and also the switch. Unplug the motor. Just a little tab. Same thing with the switch harness. Fingernail, pocket screwdriver, whatever you got handy. Three Torx bits you're gonna need. A T10, a T25, and a T40. T40 is for this, which is the, the depth in so if you have a door handle that's not sitting flush or sticking out too far, you'd loosen this. If you need it, if it's in too far and you want it to come out, you would actually tighten this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off. So that's where we use the T20. Some of these motors have three screws, some of them have four. If it has three, don't panic, it's not a big deal. Um, they didn't put the, the third one, the fourth one in for some reason on some of them. It doesn't have to be in there, it's fine. So that just slides out. And this is where the gear's supposed to be. But what usually ends up happening is these ears on the back crack and the gear will actually um, slide up and sometimes they'll fall off into the door panel depending on how tight that barrier was. A lot of people say that you know these, these break for multiple reasons. Um, it's, a, it's a poor metal that they were using and when these switch harnesses break the handle does not know its position and the motor will actually force this so hard that it'll actually blow the gear apart. So in order to get access to these um, screws, see I can't get at that one, and this one's kind of low too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna back this off. Uh, but before you do that, make sure you spray a little lube on it because these do corrode in, and this is just a brass insert in the plastic. And if it's frozen, you'll actually move the brass insert instead of moving the bolt. 
So we're gonna just crack that loose. There we go. Back it out just enough. So now you can gain access to the two screws. And you just come out this way. Now this piece here is aluminum. So the screw here on this side is a fine thread. So you have to fine thread. This arm here on the later ones is plastic. So this is gonna be a coarse thread. On the earlier handles, they actually used aluminum on this, so it'd also be a fine thread. So yeah, coarse thread. And just take the switch harness out, carefully tuck it under that. And take it out. So now that we have those out, we're gonna replace that gear. So there's a circ clip right here. Sometimes it'll rust it in. There we go. That one's really rusted. The kit comes with a new stainless steel one, so don't worry about it if you destroy it. Now we need to slide this pin out of this hole here because uh, the, the, the gear actually sits on that rod. But you don't want to push it too far because these springs will shoot out if you, if you do. And since it's a little rusty, we're going to spray some WD-40 on that as well. What you can do is from the back side, is, that's the same pin. What you can do is take a pair of needleless pliers, screws or whatever, and actually just push that rod over. And then from this side, you can wiggle it. And flip it back over again. Now, if you see these two little plastic inserts in here, you can't really see them, but... So I just moved that out of the way. Those are from the old gear that got left behind. Like I said, the gear breaks, so it leaves behind the actual pivot point pieces. The new gear comes with those, so don't worry about it. You just take this, push this all the way down, slide this gear in here, like that. And pretty much just line this hole back up to slide the pin back through. There we go. So see that groove? That groove has to line up in that, that slot. So we need to go over a little bit more. There we go. So now we're lined up. Just take the new clip. A pair of needles pliers. There we go. So now it's clipped in. So now the new paddle gear can move around. Now we're going to put the switches on because once we put the switches on, we have to tighten this up because the motor is uh, in the way. Uh, if you try putting this motor in right now, it actually hits that bolt because we took it out so far. That's why we're not putting that in yet. Uh, pay attention, there are two different types of switches. One has a lever, one does not. The one that has a lever goes on this side. So if you look down here, there's a stopper right here. Um, this is a T8. The stopper that will actually adjust how far the handle comes out and stops the first stop and when you pull it the second guy here actually hits the body down here which actually releases the door regular hole the regular holes for the pin third one goes with the screw Thread that in there. Now they should go on square. They shouldn't go on cross-threaded. Uh, you can tell if you cross-threaded it because this won't sit flush on this hole. See, like that. This one on this side. This one is oriented different than the factory. The factory wanted you to bring the wire down this way. This one sits vertical reason for that is it's, uh, it doesn't stress the wire out as much, and you'll see why in a minute. Don't over tighten it, you'll crack the switch. Okay, now that those are in, now we can tighten this one down. If you don't know how far to tighten down, what you could do is look at these uh, pieces that actually come onto the handle. These should be almost flush with the door handle. So right around there 
exactly where you want it. Um, you can adjust this when it's in the whole handle is in the car. You can get one of these little short ratcheting bits and you can go on the back side and you can bring the handle in and out for the final adjustment. Neatening up this wire mess. So just fold that one, that's the motor controller, that's the switch. This is the pressure sensor. This is the pressure sensor, so when you push the handle, this is what sees the pressure. Keep the yellow wire free, because if you have lights on the handle, you're gonna need it. If you don't, just leave it tucked off in the corner here, like that. And then this guy, this is gonna require double folding. You fold it, oh, you got it that time. And all you need is one zip tie for all that. See, much neater. And all the connectors stay down here. Nice little pocket. This comes back around again like that. Zip tie around these holes here. And you really do need to zip tie them up like this because the window goes up and down in front of this and it can catch the wiring and rip it right off the door handle. Same thing with the back cover. See how this sticks out like that? When you put that back cover back on, that's going to sit inside and flush. Uh, if you don't have the back cover, this will catch and it'll pull, pull the wires right out of the back of this. Okay. So that's set. Now we can put the motor back in. And if you have a crack gear, do, do check these. They do crack on occasion. There are replacement gears available on this. Um, they're not easy to replace, but you, they can be done. And this has to go into the little bushing down here. Like that. switches. Well, remember it used to be rotted around all the way around down here. These don't. These actually come up the middle. They plugged in over here. So these will actually fall like this. And you want it to loop because these will flex in and out. So there's very little wire movement. So the likelihood of them breaking again is going to be very slim. If you want, you can zip tie these together. They don't have to be, but I'm gonna zip tie them anyways. Tie it to the motor one, like that. And this just stays folded up. This will just float around in here like this, right here in the back. And then you take the cover, put this cover on with the four pins, like that. Now, some of these covers, depending on how old it is, this is an older one, so it's got the black butyl on it. They do have, I got another one over here. They have other ones like this. It's gray, uh, so the, the gray is a newer backing. Uh, it's pretty much the same stuff. This doesn't melt as easy as this stuff with heat. The problem they had with the black stuff is it would actually get hot in the sun, and this would ooze out and get all over the window and then you'd have those weird black smears all over the window this is not that sticky so what you could do to make it sticky again is heat it up with a heat gun or a hair dryer that'll turn it back to glue and then you can put this back on like this and then you could use these little push pin clips that also come with the kit and to put these on the easiest way I found to do it is use a socket that's around the same size as the outer ring and just take it and you just push it on like that and just do that with all four handle four pins and you're all set and this can go back in the car and like i said this is the adjustment for the handle depth so once you get it back in the car you have the, you have the handle on it you can actually tighten it or loosen it and actually bring the handle in and out and that's it that's how you rebuild the handle